Hello everyone, it's Ranga Kuramia Arnold and this is Kisembo Academy. Right on your screen are a set of transactions that we are going to be posting to a two-column cash flow. So I'll be posting those transactions one by one and we'll get started right now. So there are about 15 transactions that we are going to look at, so I'll get straight to the first transaction. July 1st, balance brought forward from the previous month. This means that the business was operational. And so from the previous month, we have balance brought forward, which is um, 21 million for cash and uh, 43 million 280,000 for bank. So of course, we know that bank and cash normally have debit balances. So because they have debit balances, it means we are going to go to the debit side of the two-column cash book, and we are going to put the 21 million in the cash column on the debit side. Then we shall go ahead and put the 43 million 280,000 on in the bank column on the debit side of the cash book. So those are the balances are brought down from the previous session, and this took place on the 1st of July. So moving on to our next transaction. Our next transaction says bought goods for resale at 10 million paying by check. That is on second. So we bought uh, goods 10 million by check. The items affected here when we buy goods, goods are things that we buy with the intention of selling them again. So um, the items here are affected. We have purchases and then also we have, of course, the bank account has been affected so bank has reduced because we've spent the 10 million it's from the bank so we are going to go ahead and credit the bank account that is in other words crediting the cash book but by putting the 10 million in the column for bank so we put the 10 million in the column for bank definitely the other item that has been affected is purchases and this took place on 2nd of july and so we shall go, before filling in the folio column, we go ahead and find out with where that purchases account is. So we go into one of the books of accounts, and uh, here we go, the purchases is found in the general ledger. So we go to the purchases account, uh, general ledger that is on page one. We go ahead and debit the purchases account with 10 million. The other item that has been affected is bank. This happened on second of July and of course where is this bank column found this bank account is found in the cash book and uh, the cash book is page page one of the cash book you know we can have a cash book with so many pages so here we are assuming that we are on page one of the cash book so that's how we fill in the folio column with cash book on page one and since we are in the general ledger and we found that the general ledger has our purchases account on page one so it means that in the folio column of the cash book that is uh, where we had previously put the 10 million we shall go ahead and put say that these purchases account can be found in the general ledger on page one so that's what we mean by gl1 gl means general ledger page one so that's the first transaction we'll move on to the second transaction on fourth sales of uganda shilling six hundred six million one hundred thousand for cash in other words there are some cash sales here on fourth so uh, how do we handle these ones we the two items that are affected here of course we have sales and then we have cash when we make sales, of course, the business earns money. There is cash flowing into the business. So we'll go right ahead and debit the cash account. In other words, we debit the, co the cash book by putting the 6100000 on the in the cash column on the debit side of the cash book. The other item affected is definitely sales, and this took place on 4th. So where do we find the sales account? Of course, the sales account is always found in the general ledger. So to complete the double entry, we go on to the sales account in the general ledger, and we go ahead and credit the sales account. Remember, increases in sales are credited. That is 6100000 The other item affected is cash. Uh, we, this cash is found in the cash book on page one of the cash book. That's why we put CB1. And of course, this took place on the 4th. Now, we realize that the sales account is on page 2 of the, gen, uh, of the general ledger. So it means in the folio column, 
we will go back and put page two. G, that, that is, we shall say GL2, meaning general ledger page two. Even as we are doing this, this, these transactions, I presume that you are very comfortable with double entry. You know the double entry rules for assets, liabilities, expenses, revenues, as, low, as well as equity. So we proceed to the next transaction. On 5th, Buete paid us by check 4,340,000. So, of course, we have Buete paying us. It means Buete was once our debtor. We probably supplied goods to him on credit, and now he's paying us. And he paid us by check. So it means um, the two items affected here, we have Buete being a data. I'll call him data Buete. His, uh, his account has been affected. And also the check, the bank, the amount of money in the bank is going to, has been affected. How has it been affected? Because Buete has paid us, it means the amount of money in the bank has increased. So it means that we are going to debit the cash book by specifically debiting the bank column because the amount of money in the bank has increased and of course Buete being our data of course when he pays us it means that his account has reduced he's in in other words he's owing he's no longer owing us that amount of money it has been cleared so how do we go about this in the double entry system so definitely we shall go ahead and debit the bank column or the bank account that is debiting the cash book by putting the 4,340,000 in the bank column. The other item affected is data buete. And this happened on 5th. So where are data found in which book are late data found? All data, that is all people, all our customers with whom, uh, who, who come and buy goods from us on credit, these ones are found in the sales ledger. So we shall go ahead to the sales ledger and look for his account. That is where we are going to complete the double entry from. So going on to the sales ledger in the data Buete account, uh, it's on page one. We go ahead and put that amount, 4,340,000. Uh, the other item affected is definitely the bank, which is found on the, in the cash book, on page one of the cash book. This happened on 5th of July. Now, uh, you realize that the background of the page you're seeing is, has been tinted with uh, light blue. It, that has been done on purpose just to differentiate that uh, this is uh, a separate book from the general ledger. In the general ledger, I've left the background to remain white. Uh, for the sales ledger, which the, the one you're seeing right now, the one that contains all accounts of customers that come and buy stuff from us on credit i have tinted it blue light blue in the background and of course when it comes to other books it will you keep seeing the color code changing and that should signify to you that it is a different book so for this one specifically it is the sales ledger so in the sales ledger the data buete account is on page one of the sales ledger so we we'll come and fill in the folion column in the cash book by putting SL1. The SL1 means sales ledger page one. That is where that account is found. And that's how we fill in that folio column. So next transaction on sixth, paid for stationary in cash, 1,200,000. Of course, when we pay for stationary, we, it's the cash that is going to reduce. Reductions in cash are credited. So we are going to go ahead and credit the cash column in the cash book by putting there 1,200,000 in the cash column. The other item affected is the stationary account, we'll call it the stationary expense account. This happened on 6th. So we'll go ahead and look for the stationary account. Of course, this one is found in the general ledger. So we go to the general ledger. Stationary account is on page 3, so we debit. We debit the stationary account. Stationary is an expense and all expenses when they increase we debit them. So 1,200,000 is put right there in the debit side of the stationary account. The other item affected is cash. The cash account is found in the cash book on page one and this took place on sixth. So moving on to the next transaction. On eighth, bought coffee, bought office equipment by check. 3,780,000. So we bought office equipment, 3,870,000 by check. 
So that means it's the money in the bank that reduced. And of course, when money in the bank reduces, we go ahead and credit the bank account. When we credit 3,780,000, we put that in the bank column on the credit side of the cash book. The other item affected is the office equipment account. This took place on 8th. So office equipment is a fixed asset, so we find it in the general ledger as well. So we go ahead and complete the double entry by looking for the office equipment account in the general ledger. And when we go right there, we find that the office equipment account is on page 4. So we go ahead and debit it. It's a fixed asset and uh, increases in assets are debited. So 3,780,000. That is debited. The other item affected is bank. This bank account is found on, in the cash book on page 1, and that took place on 8th of July. So moving on to the next transaction. On 9th, cash sales of 6 million. Of course, when we make cash sales, you, uh, it means the amount of cash in the business is going to increase. Increases in cash, cash being an asset. Increases in assets are debited. So when cash increases... We debit it. So we shall go ahead and debit the, uh, the cash book by putting the six million in the cash column of um, in the cash column of the cash book. The other item affected is sales. This took place on 9th. And so we'll go ahead and look for that sales account. As these are cash sales, uh, sales, the sales account is found in the general ledger. So we shall go right ahead to the general ledger and complete the double entry by posting the 6 million on the credit side of the sales account. The other item affected is cash. This cash account is found in the cash book on page 1, and this took place on 9th. And of course, we know that the sales account is on page 2, so we go back to the folio column of the transaction we just posted, and we, and we put page 2, that is by putting general ledger page 2, GL2 right there. Next transaction on 10th, bought goods. And by buying goods, we bought goods using cash worth 4 million shillings. Then we used also the check to buy goods uh, worth 5 million, 600,000. So how do we treat these? These are like two transactions in one. So we shall go, we shall deal with one by one. The first bit is that we bought goods using cash, 4 million. Now, take note, uh, from the definition of purchases, the technical term for purchases in the accounting terminology, I think I covered this earlier, goods are things you buy with the purpose of selling them. It means that if you are in a supermarket and you, you, you sell groceries, the furniture is not goods. However, the groceries you buy with the intention of selling them, those are what we call goods. In other words, goods are things you buy with the intention of selling them. And things that you buy with the intention of selling them are called purchases. So if here they're telling us that bought goods, uh, this means these are purchases. So it means that uh, we had cash purchases worth $4 million, and also we had cash purchases with you that were acquired using the check that are worth five million six hundred thousand so let's deal with the ones for cash first of course when we buy stuff when we do purchases uh the two items affected here of course are purchases and then cash since we spent cash to buy these goods it means the amount of cash in the business reduced so the cash account is going to reduce and since uh, in so buying we acquired goods it means the purchases account is going to increase which signifies that the amount of goods in the business is increasing, so purchases account increases. So the double entry here is, first of all, the cash reduces by 4 million and re reductions in cash are credited, so that's why we'll go ahead and credit the cash book by putting 4 million in the cash column. Uh, the other item affected is purchases, and this took place on the 10th. So we'll go ahead and look for the purchases account. Of course, the purchases account is found in the general ledger. So we'll go right to the general ledger. 
and look for the purchases account it's of course on page one uh, we complete the double entry by debiting the purchases account increases in purchases whenever we do purchases we debit so that's the four million we put right there the other item affected is cash cash is found in the cash book on page one and this took place on 10th so we've completed the sub double entry for that first bit of that transaction then the other bit we still we bought goods using check worth five million six hundred thousand so let's complete that one as well so we'll simply go and since these things happened on the same date it all happened on 10th so we can go right ahead and credit the bank account or in other words credit the cash book by putting the five million six hundred thousand in the bank column on the credit side like that and of course the other item affected is still purchases because it's all purchases so we go right again to the purchases account and complete the double entry for the bank transaction by putting five million six hundred thousand right there on the debit side of the purchases account the other item affected is the bank which still is on cash book page one and that took place on 10th so we finished that so we go on to the again still on 10th they are telling us here the question that paid 80,000 cash for transportation of goods to the business so we paid cash 80,000 that is an expense however when we use cash cash reduces in the business and reductions in cash we credit so we are going to go ahead and credit the cash account or credit the cash book by putting the 80,000 in the cash column on the credit side of the cash book that is right there 80,000 the other item affected is transport now transport is an expense and this transport expense is found in the general ledger all expenses when they are incurred we debit them in other words increases in expenses are debited so that's why we go to the general ledger still and look for the transport account the transport account and we debit the transport account with 80,000. The other item affected is cash, which is found in the cash book, page one, That is, uh, and, and that took place on that date. So finished with that one, we go on to the next transaction. Uh, on 10th, still again, paid Eddie Mutwe, one million by check. So Eddie Mutwe has been paid one million by check. Now, us paying Edimutwe 1 million, it means he supplied with us goods on credit and now we are paying him his money. So, what does that make Edimutwe? It makes Edimutwe a creditor. Where do we find creditors' accounts or where do we find uh, suppliers who give us stuff on credit? We find all their accounts in a special book we call the Purchases Ledger. So, after posting the 1 million in the bank account, the other item affected is the Eddie, Eddie Mutwe account. We go ahead to this special book we are calling the Purchases Ledger. Again, because it is another book that is, it's, we have tinted it red in the background. So the creditor Eddie Mutwe account is on page one of in that book. We go ahead and, and uh, debit it with one million. We are debiting it because it has reduced all creditors' accounts creditor accounts increases in creditor accounts are credited reductions in creditor accounts are debited so that's why we are debiting this one with one million the other item affected is the bank this bank is found in the cash book on page one and this took place on that date of 10th so that is how the double entry goes we debited the bank account because it reduced in value and also the creditors account also reduced because when we are paying him money that he that we owe him it means his account with us is reducing we are owing him less money or we are actually owing him nothing at all that is if we have cleared everything uh moving on to the next transaction we have uh on 10th banked cash 27 million we had cash in the business and we decided to take it to the bank so these kinds of transactions are the kind of transactions you call contra entries because their double entry is going to begin and end in the cash book itself in the same book so how do we how do we go about this when we bank cash it means that we had cash 
and then we sent it to the bank. What does that mean? It means that the cash in the business, the cash at hand has reduced. So that is what we're, that's why we, that's where we're going to start from. We start with the cash that has reduced. So reductions in cash are credited. So you go ahead and credit the cash column in the cash book by putting the 27 million in the cash column. The other item affected is definitely the bank because the cash is being converted to bank. And so uh, since uh, the bank account is also in the same book, still in the cash book, and remember the bank is increasing, the amount of money in the bank is increasing, so it means you're supposed to debit the bank account. So we shall go right ahead and debit the bank account by, you know, putting the 27 million in the on the debit side in the bank column on the debit side of the cash book the other item affected is cash all these are taking place on the 10th and of course because the double entry of this transaction begins and ends in the same book in this case being the cash book this is what we call a contra entry and so in the folio column we put that letter c to indicate that this is a contra entry so that's it for that transaction. We move on to the next transaction. On 12th, sold goods and received a check of 14400000 So this is more like you have, these are sales, but well, you, they are not cash sales, they are bank sales, if I may use that term. In other words, we sold goods and we were paid in the bank. So when we were paid in the bank, it means the amount of money in the bank increased. So... Amounts in the bank increasing increasing means we are going to debit the bank account. And of course, when we also make sales, the sales account is also going to increase. So the two items affected in this transaction, we have the bank account and the sales account. The bank account is going to increase and the sales account is also going to increase. So we shall go ahead and debit the bank account by putting 14400000 in the bank column of the cash book. The other item of item affected is the sales account and this took place on the 12th so we shall go right ahead and look for the sales account where do we find the sales account it's always in the general ledger so we go to the general ledger to the sales account and post and we credit the sales account increases in sales are credited yeah so we credit the sales account with 40 million four hundred thousand the other item affected is the bank and this took place on 12th of course, the bank account we're talking about here is found in the cash book on page one. And so we go back and complete the, the records by putting in the folio column that we the sales account is in GL2, that is general ledger page two. So moving on to our third last transaction. Withdrew cash, 5,500,000 from the bank for business use. This is another case where the double entry is going to start and end in the same book we are getting money from the bank and we are bringing it into the business to operate in the business so if you look at this transaction withdrew five million five hundred thousand from the bank for business use this means that the amount of money in the bank reduced so because the amount of money in the bank reduced that's where we start from so reductions in the bank account are credited. So we shall go ahead and credit the bank column of the cash book by putting 5,500,000 right there. Of course, the other item affected is the cash. This took place on the 15th. So we go ahead and complete that uh, transaction by, you know, when we get money from the bank and put it in the business, it means the amount of cash in the business increased and increases in cash we debit so we go ahead and complete the double entry by putting the five million five hundred thousand in the cash column of uh, the cash book on the debit side the other item affected being the bank and this took place on 15th and of course because the double entry here began and ended in the same book, the same book here being the cash book, this is a contra entry. So we put the C, that letter C, in the folio column to indicate that this is a contra entry. The second last transaction on 15th, 
paid salaries and wages, 4,750,000 in cash. Again, the two items affected with this transaction, we have the salaries expense because they paid, you know, salaries. We have the salaries expense and also we have cash because it was cash that was used. So what happened to the cash? The amount of cash reduced because cash was dished out to pay the salaries and of course the salaries expense increased. Increases in expenses are debited, decreases in assets like cash are credited. So because the amount of cash in the business has reduced as a result of meeting this expense, we are going to go ahead and credit the cash account by putting the 4750000 in the cash column of the cash book on the credit side. The other item affected is definitely salaries right there. This took place on the 15th. So we go to salaries. Salaries are found in the general ledger. So we shall go to the general ledger and look for the salaries account. And in the salaries account, we go ahead and put the four, four mil, we debit the salaries account with 4,750,000. The other item affected is cash. Cash is found in the cash book, page one, and this took place on the 15th in 2020 in july so of course the salaries and wages account is on page six of the general ledger so we shall come and put uh that this salaries account is found in on page six that's how we say general ledger page six that's what we put in the folio column then finally in our prime final transaction paid motor vehicle expenses by cash one million one hundred and forty thousand this is just like before. These are motor vehicle expenses or call them motor expenses. We're paying them by cash. The amount of cash in the business reduced. So we credit the cash account with 1140000 The other item affected is motor expenses. This took place on the 16th. So we go ahead and complete the double entry by putting the 1140000 on the debit side of the motor expenses account that is found on page 8 of the general ledger the other item affected is cash which is found in the cash book on page one and this took place on 16th now that we have finished of course uh, we'll go ahead and put the general ledger page eight right there in the folio column and uh, now that we are done with uh, Posting all those transactions into the two column cash book, we are going to go ahead and balance off the accounts. Now, we are only going to balance off the, this two column cash book you're seeing right on your screen. However, in practice, when you're balancing off this two column cash book, it means you're supposed to balance off all the other respective accounts that are in the purchases ledger, the sales ledger, the general ledger. But we are only going to balance off. Uh, the book the, the two column cash book since this video is specifically concerned with the two column cash book So we are going to balance off column by column if you add up Let's look let's start with the bank column if you start with the bank column on the debit side and add it up You're going to end up with 89 million 20,000 if you go on and uh, if you go on and add up the bank column on the credit side, it is twenty-five million eight hundred and eighty thousand. So, of course, you realize that the bank column on the debit side is bigger than the bank column on the credit side. So, to balance them off, we are going to find the difference between uh, the two. So, we shall get eighty-nine million. 20,000 that is the figure we are getting from the bank column on the debit side we says we sub we say minus uh, the total of the bank column on the credit side which so happens to be 25 million eight hundred and eighty thousand when we subtract the two we shall end up with 63 million one hundred and forty thousand now that 63 million one hundred and forty thousand becomes our balance carried down and we put the balance carried down on the side where it is smaller. So we go ahead and put it right there, the 63,140,000. We put it right there. That means now, after putting it right there as our balance carried down, the two balances now agree. We have 89,020,000 on 
this side of the debit side of the bank column we shall have the same total of 89 million 20000 on the credit side of the bank column and now that being our balance carried down it will become that is now that is that is something that that's the total we have written at the end of the month of july so beginning of next month of august that 63 million 140 thousand becomes our opening balance for the bank account the same opening balance we were talking about at the very beginning of this video so we are going to go ahead and do the very same thing for the cash column the cash column on the debit side when we add it up we end up with 38 million 600 thousand and then when we go to the cash column on the credit side when we add it up we end up with 38 million 170 thousand so you realize that the cash column on the debit side is bigger than the cash column on the credit side so to balance this off we subtract we say 38 million 600 thousand which is the debit bal debit side figure minus the smaller one which is 38 which is 38 million 170 thousand that is on the credit side when we subtract those two we end up with 430 thousand so that 430 thousand is put on the smaller side and of course in this case the smaller side is the the credit side and that is our balance carried down and uh, of course after putting it right there on that side we realize that when now we add up the cash column on the credit side on the debit side it shall add up to 38 million 600 thousand and when we do add up the credit side it's still going to be 38 million 600 thousand so it means the cash columns have also balanced so our balance carried down which so happens to be 430 thousand will be the opening balance for the next month on august 1st and so it means our opening balance for cash for august 1st is 430,000, and that will be what we call the balance brought down no so we have finished balancing off our cash book in case you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below in case you there is any explanation that you feel was not clear that you feel i should expound on more feel free to let me know in the comment section below if you feel that i need to do more worked examples on this topic or any other topic in accounting please let me know in the comment section below and that's it for today's session i trust you have understood how we post transactions to a two column cash book it's going to be the same even with a three-column cash book as we shall see in our next videos. Like this video if you like it. Be sure to subscribe if you've not yet subscribed. Check out other awesome accounting lectures on the channel. My name is Rangakura Mia Arnold and I'll see you in the next session. Take care.